I get asked pretty frequently about how to properly winterize a washer in an RV and I'm going to do a pretty simple demonstration. Um, it's not as complicated as some people make it sound. Um, there are some that have an actual setting for it, um, but I'm, I'm just going to show you the way that I think is the easiest way to effectively winterize a washer. This will be on a Splendid, Splendidi, however you want to pronounce it. It is a WFL 1300XD. This is going to be the same process for pretty much any washer. Again, some do have a specific setting for just for winterizing, but this is going to work across all models. All you're going to do is winterize your coach as usual, uh, get antifreeze in the system, and then after that, you're going to need to get antifreeze here. It's much easier to get the antifreeze to the rest of the system and then work on getting it through here. And you're going to do that by powering it on, going to a regular wash cycle. And then here's a very important part. You need to be on a warm cycle. So on here you have four bars, so two of them would be the most warm you're going to get it. And that's because you want to make sure antifreeze is coming through the hot and the cold valve. And this achieves that when you do warm water. Um, so after that, all you're going to do is crack open your detergent tray here. Once you have this open, it allows you to see the water coming in because you're going to want a visual of the antifreeze coming in here so you know that it's gone through. And all you're going to do is start your cycle. It's going to do its sense thing, um, and then it should begin to try filling the washer. So now looking back here, um, it's kind of hard to see. You'll have multiple streams of antifreeze back there indicating that both valves are open because you're on warm. It does that by mixing hot and cold. And you're going to want to make sure that a decent amount of antifreeze makes it in here, at least enough to where you can see it start pulling up on the bottom. And you don't need much to get into the valves. It's the drain pump you have to worry about, and that's the part a lot of people also skip, unfortunately, is the drain. So you need to get enough in here to start filling it. You'll see it kind of start building up in the bottom there, building up its pool. Usually I say 30 seconds to a minute. Um, you don't need a full cycle of water, but you do want to build some up. Now we've got a decent amount of antifreeze inside there, and I'm going to show you how to get the drain to activate. That's actually pretty simple. All you're going to do is shut the system down, or not pause it, but you can just power off. And by default, it will drain itself, meaning you will get antifreeze into the drain and all of the drain components behind the washer. That's the part most people would uh, forget about or skip. Um, and again, like I said, there are a lot more complicated procedures. Some of these have specific winterizing settings, but that is the easiest way. You get antifreeze into the system by putting it on a warm cycle, let it fill up a decent amount for about a minute, and then simply turn it off and it will by default activate the drain pump and everything in the washer is winterized. And that is how you winterize an RV washer.